you. Thank you very much. Have a seat. Thanks so very much. That's nice of you and uh, appreciate it. And it's probably for the sweater, but I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Uh, listen, here's, here's, here's the thing, uh, I've got spiders, uh, not me, I, not on me, I don't have spiders on me, I have spiders at my house, and uh, I've told you about this before, I don't know if anybody's having the same problem lately, but uh, I've, had, I've had spider problems that I've, I've spoken about, like the, the one that was above my bed, remember I was laying in bed, and you can see it, and then you don't want to sleep, because what if it comes down, and you know, so, so I had one, and I'd see one or two occasionally, they must have been related in some way, and, um, but now I have so many spiders everywhere, all around the house, they're just everywhere I go, there's spiders, spider webs, remnants of spider eatings, different spider things all over the place, and uh, that makes the other spider look like, oh, those were the good old days. That... <laughs> don't be complaining, because you don't know how bad it can get. So, so now I don't know what's happening, because they're really, I'm not kidding around, I, they're, they're all around the house and in the house now. I don't know if they're getting chased in by the bobcat that's in my yard, which I told you about. <laughs> I have a bobcat, and maybe they, they have seen the bobcat now, and they're, they're there, which I don't blame them, because I've been actually holed away in my house for two weeks now because of the bobcat. <laughs> Thank goodness for the canned goods I have saved up. And um, <laughs> the spiders, I wish they'd go away. That's all I'm saying. I don't hate them. I just would prefer that they're not in my house. I think a lot of people do hate spiders uh, because you don't know how to reason with them. They're not little things that you can, most little vermins, varmints, vermits, animals, um, <laughs> that we don't want, we can do the hate. Or scat, you know, whenever you don't want something, that noise pretty much works for just about anything. You do that for a spider, and they're just like, just whatever, the, you know, this. I don't know what they're doing, but they don't care about. The only thing that I found that they really hate uh, is the tambourine. And um, <laughs> I was practicing the other day, and uh, I, uh, I just noticed that that's when they scatter, uh, when, especially when you do from the hip to the hand. Um, that was the move I was practicing. Uh, so um, anyway, so here's the thing. I, so they're all over, and I don't want to kill them. I've said that before. I don't like killing things. But sometimes, you know how you just, as much as you try not to kill something, just one will just get it. You just like, you go. <laughs> You know, you can go for days not killing, and then one spider is just unlucky that you just get. Or you think you're not really hurting them, and you think, I'll just wash it down the sink. Like, if it's the, the spider's in the sink, and if you turn the water on, well, this won't hurt it. It'll just, you know, float away to another area. But you know they're not floating away, because they're just in there hanging by one of their legs, just... <laughs> or just on the side with that little bubble. And then they crawl right up, just clean and angry. Just it's so... <laughs> So what I try to do, and, and I'm sure everybody's tried this too, is what I'll, when I see something, and I did this with a wasp the other day too, there was a wasp on the window. So if you see a spider, what you, you get a cup, right? And you put it over the whatever it is, but then you have to go find a thing to slip behind it to get it exactly right. Someone needs to invent, and we have kid inventors here today, so hopefully they're getting a good idea. Someone needs to invent a spider trapper. Like, because uh, we have a, fl a fly swatter, which, by the way, it should be a fly squasher. And it's not a, <laughs> we're not swatting at them. We're trying to squish them. Um, but we should invent, like, spider be gone or spider trapped or, ooh, get out, spider. Um, <laughs> something that you just, because, and they're hard to catch, too, the spiders. You know who the hardest spiders are? The recluse spiders, because they don't like solicitors. And um, <laughs> sometimes you'll see them with dark glasses reading the paper somewhere. <laughs> But I, I refuse to be frightened by him. I refuse to be Miss Muffet, the one who was sitting on the tuffet. Because um, she was frightened by a spider that came down beside her. And um, you know Miss Muffet. She sat on the tuffet, which a tuffet, I found out, is, is a chair, basically. But it didn't rhyme with tuffet. And her name would have been Claire. So, it, and, Or little Miss Tottoman, which sat on an ottoman. But uh, <laughs> they went with Muffet. Um, so anyway, uh, I think that spiders, the thing to try to remember why not to kill them is they do a lot of good things. They, they eat insects and they eat uh, mosquitoes. And I say, you get one mosquito for me and mi casa is su casa. <laughs> and uh, they're special little creatures that have eight eyes. I always like to be informative in some way. They have eight eyes, which if they have bad eyesight, I, I dare lens crafters to get that ready in an hour. Um, <laughs> 
and they'd be all called old 16 eyes if they had glasses. Can you imagine <laughs> all the glasses? Um, <laughs> And this is the most important thing, is they have eight legs, and they're very light on their feet, so I think they would be excellent, excellent dancers. Make me dance like a spider, Tony. dance like a spider. <laughs> I don't see why not. It's not any worse than the other dances those kids are doing. No, that's true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then I thought for a change, because I, I like to switch it up, I was going to dance in the luxury box and I couldn't get in. <laughs> I was locked out of the luxury box. It's only for riffraff. That's uh, exactly. <laughs> mm. I'm excited. You know who's here? Yes. Farrah Fawcett's here. I've ever met her. I, I usually, uh, I usually remember, and I don't think I've met her. <laughs> <laughs> and I look forward to it. Um, also, he's been with us before. He's very funny. Andy Richter from the <laughs> Fox And Kid Inventors. I said Kid Inventors. They're here. Kid Inventors are here. <laughs> What they are, are they're little kids that invent things. They're not people who invent kids. They're uh, <laughs> just so you're wondering at home. Um, all right, uh, hey, there are people in the riffraff room. Let's see who's gonna get to come in here in the luxury box. I'll uh, spin them. <laughs> Michelle Thompson. Michelle. <laughs> Welcome. There's oxygen if you uh, are out of <laughs> breath or anything. Uh, seriously, are you okay? I'm great. Oh, you're in good shape then. Yes. Fantastic. All right, well, welcome and uh, enjoy yourself. If you need anything, I'll be right over here. Thanks. All right. Well, I'll tell you. I, I am constantly uh, uh, amazed. People, people will, uh, it, they surprise me all the time because what happened was this little girl, Emily uh, Menkowski, she's nine years old, she sent in an email and wanted me to draw a mustache on her, uh, it, and, which is, it was an odd request, but if that's what she wanted, I went on the looky-loo and I drew a mustache and I was joking, saying, if anybody else wants a mustache, send your picture in and I'll draw a mustache. We were flooded with, with people. <laughs> wanting mustaches, and so uh, it, it's just incredible to me. So I'm going to read a few of these to you to give you an example of, of uh, 
the kind of time people have on their hands. Um, <laughs> Sarah Price from Kirkland, Washington. Hi, Ellen. I love your show. I'm sending you a picture I took myself. I would like you to put a mustache that fits me. I think you have a good looky-loo talent and would know one, uh, what one fits me best. Keep coming on every day. I'll keep watching every day. Love, Sarah. Okay, uh, and there's Sarah right there. Oh, you'd never know you took that yourself. Um, <laughs> So thank you very much for, for the, your compliment on, uh, on me knowing what mustache, but I gotta be honest, uh, uh, this, this is how I know. I have a mustache chart at home, <laughs> and uh, it allows me to choose the exact right mustache for any face. And um, so for you, I'm gonna say, well, first of all, it looks like your glasses are up over your head, and that's, I'm just gonna put them back where they should be. Um, <laughs> Oh, but then your hair would probably fall down like that if your glasses were. <laughs> Actually, I think I'm gonna put a hat on you because... <laughs> and a pipe, because that's... <laughs> and maybe a parrot, because I think... <laughs> And then I think that's the kind of mustache you should have now. That, and it's, if your friends are asking, Sarah, it's the Fu Man shoe is what I drew for you. <laughs> that's what I thought fits your face best because you seem to have the oval. All right, and then this comes from uh, Lisa Wheeland, Butler, Pennsylvania. This is our new Mastiff puppy. Uh, capo or capo, although he's very cute, a mustache would make such a difference. <laughs> um, okay, I knew this would happen. Um, I had hoped things would not become uh, ridiculous. This is not supposed to be a silly game. <laughs> I mean, fine, if you want to send in a picture and you want me to put a mustache on you, I will, but now a mustache on a dog, that's ridiculous. <laughs> although it would look cute with a hat <laughs> and a pipe. <laughs> and a scarf in case it's cold. <laughs> and some socks. <laughs> and just a little skirt. <laughs> All right, hey, don't go away. Farrah Foss is gonna be sitting here when we come back. We'll be right back. Our first guest is currently starring in the movie The Cookout, but she is perhaps best known as one of TV's original Charlie's Angels. So you should have a nice audience because you're nice. So well, good. They're, yeah. they're nice. Yeah, they are nice. Very they're nice. they're very nice, friendly people. I I I'm glad that you you sense that right away. Now, now am I going to kick you if I? Then I'll just do this. Oh, hey. and then when you change, let me know and I'll change I, too. We'll do that. <laughs> then we can we like can like this synchronized. Synchroni we can do this in the Olympics. The Olympics, the chair. We should start something, <laughs> a new competition. It's time for a synchronized, uh, and then we would. We'd have to do Chair it really group. high. Like that. I'm not even going to attempt yeah. that. No. Why not? You've been practicing that, I can tell. That was the first time. Can you believe it? <laughs> wow. It just came naturally. Wow. <laughs> now, if I do it, I take off your leg. Yeah. And if you, if you do, don't worry about it, because these we throw these away yeah. as soon as I take them off. <laughs> As soon as they get dirty. All right, so now, is that weird to see that, or do you, are you used to seeing old clips of Charlie's Angels all the time now? No, you know, I've never even seen the complete set or year of Charlie's Angels. Really? No. But it must be on rerun. You must, like, once in a while catch it, right? No. <laughs> no. Do, you, do, you, do you not no. want to? Do you... Um, well, no, I'm always a little shocked. Sometimes I'll have a vague memory when they run a clip of doing something. Sometimes I think, was I there? Did, did I say that? Was did that you remember was that? that I? Did you remember that clip? I do. You do? Kind of. Because you were just there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they came, they went, then other right. clothes, the hair, the makeup. Right. Yeah. Now, and, and so you were there for one year, right? One season, yeah. One season. season. Uh -huh. and, and can you believe one season and you became this huge pop icon out, out of that and, I guess, the well, poster? Well, and, and I would like. <laughs> Thank you.
That's the first time I've lifted it up. It's here all the time. <laughs> and, no, it, I look at that and I think, why wasn't I holding my stomach in? Okay, that's what I see. When no, I you are not thinking that. No, now I'm thinking it. No, not then. I wasn't thinking no, it. No, but why now? Even you look great. Yeah, no, yeah. I have a flatter stomach now. But anyway, no, <laughs> it's okay. Never. I'm not fishing for compliments. No, but don't do that to us. You're supposed to have stuff like that when you bend over. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. Right. The, the girls today don't have it. They're pretty buff, aren't they? The girls Let's don't see. have it today. No. No. They're ten. <laughs> this is true. They're this ten true. years old. Oh. Uh, but so when you think, when you the question you just asked me, I I, I, I want, sometimes wonder if uh, oh, there's some hair. Okay. I'll take Good. it and sell it. <laughs> <laughs> There was some hair for sale. Yeah, uh, really? Uh, yes, of my hair. But oh, we'd was have it to really do a your DNA. hair? I don't know. Let's do a DNA. I, 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 I don't think How so. How much were they charging for strand they, of your hair? They sell them in the, you know, the snowball, the, you know, the snow that you turn over. And the, your hair was in one of those snowball things? Yes, instead of the snow. Our they skies are getting dirtier and dirtier. <laughs> we have snow and hair coming down. Yeah, All right, the, so they were selling your yeah. hair. So, because it's huge that what you did. Well, but yes, I like. I, I sometimes wonder if I hadn't followed it up with, uh, you know, the burning bed and extremities, which, which... you were amazing in. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Um, what would have happened? But that doesn't right. seem to be the the posters that they keep showing when I come right. on. The show. Well, they don't show those clips. No posters from the burning bed. <laughs> no, that wasn't. No, no that's not no. a look that people want to look at. <laughs> in fact, my my yeah. makeup lady said. How did you let that happen? Why would you let him do that to you? I said, I, it, I was acting. It was written that way. Right. <laughs> I can't watch yeah. it, she says. Yeah. Well, she's watching soap operas thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah. right. No, but that's true, because it must have been here. It's the, it, the, the show was so popular, and then you, you left after a, a season, and people must have thought you were, you know, just crazy, and, and then yet you went on to do so many other good things. Well, I think I did all that I could do with that character. Uh huh. <laughs> that was hard for you to. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. She no, goes, uh -huh. I, no, I understand what you're saying. Well, you know, five years, five, four more years, it would have been. You know, I was the athletic one, unless they had, you know, started the wires, and I could have done, you know, yeah, like the Matrix type things. Well, or the hidden dragon, foreign, the whatever that was called. Hidden I dragon, foreign, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Remember then they would. Yes. Walk? No, I had to actually do some of that stuff myself. Oh, well, there's another hair. No, to stop it. Yeah. Stop it. Wait, somebody else sat in this chair. That's not even my hair. No, it's coming from. It's coming from. It's your hair. No, it's it's not. Look at the length. It's it's definitely not. <laughs> See? Oh, yeah, okay, no. okay. No, you know Paris Hilton Look, was you in have that. You the most beautiful blue eyes. I've seen you a couple of times. We pass at parties. You know, uh -huh. I kind of go. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, not exactly, but your eyes are striking. Beautiful eyes. Thank you. Your eyes are striking, too. <laughs> um, all right, listen, um, we have to take a break, but, but speaking of, of hair, <laughs> no, I'm say, it's going to be for sale on eBay. Watch after the show. Uh, we, we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back and see how much we can get for your hair. Okay. All right. We are back with Farrah Fawcett, and so far, just someone on our crew has offered me $60 for that one strand of hair. <laughs> I'm telling you, you should go to charity. We should figure out what it charity should, and sell so this my, one my piece of hair. My brush is probably in the dressing room. Oh, the brush has got to be worth a fortune. to be <laughs> molting right now. Yeah, you if know, it's just coming off of you like this, <laughs> it's, it's, the brush has to have a whole lot. You could make a wig out of that brush. I, I might. <laughs> Put it back here. Yeah. You know. Now, listen, tell me about, uh, you're doing a reality show for TV Land? Yes, I am. How come? I don't know. <laughs> no, no, I do know because my life is like a reality show. I mean, they follow me, they had the paparazzi, and I thought I was doing this promotion for the cookout. So I thought, well, they can follow me around and get the good, the bad, the honest, mm -hmm. and the truth, which, you know, you think that they're going to tell the truth when they're following you around, and then they make some awful story. So. It seems like an interesting idea. At this point, you know, I'm sort of <laughs> exhausted and breaking down, and I don't know if yeah. it's going to... Who wants to see what happens? But maybe... Well, everybody's curious about, uh, mm. you know, everybody's life, it seems like. So, like you said, if they're following you around anyway, it's going to be on TV, TV Land. When does it start? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's January. I, if, if Have they started following you yet? 
Every move I make. Really? Every step I take. Every, every breath you take? <laughs> All right. Um, every smile I fake. All right, you said you were... <laughs> All right, so you said you were doing press for a cookout for the movie yeah, with Queen um, Latifah, and you said you learned how... You, you, were you the only white person in the movie, you said? Uh, there was one other, sort of. I uh -huh. mean, he was in it a little bit, is what I mean. A sort of yes. white person. No, he was, he was white, but I... Yes, I played Danny Glover's wife. Uh-huh. And uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Oh, and in fact, I have to do this dance. You know, I've got my T-shirt and my panties on. You know, it was directed by uh, Lance Rivera, who uh -huh. weighs about 300 pounds. Uh-huh. Have you ever been on a film when they've said, the, the director said, we'll do it one more time this way? Usually with me, it's, it's a stunt or it's how to do something sensual or something. And so I always go, and then, oh, you show me, you show mm -hmm. me. And he was about 300 pounds, never thinking, of course, that he could do this dance. So he got up and he did it. And I was like, wow. That's really good. <laughs> well, I want to well, know what the dance is because I want to learn it. I'm always looking for new dances. <laughs> um, what do you... Well, we have to stand up. All right, I'll stand up. Tell me what you want to do. Do you need music? Or do you have I've got my T-shirt and my panties on? I've got my T-shirt and my panties on? Is that a song? <laughs> I think so. That's... <laughs> well, who sings it? I, I, well, we could just... Uh, this is daytime, Farrah. <laughs> Jacket off, but I can't. Yeah, make it. Wait, wait. yeah, because you're Mike. You can't. I'm not. Mike. All right. Okay. All right. So it's a dance. You know, it's what it's. it's we'll get. Let me see. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Yeah, that's kind of good. Okay. He described it as, as like you're standing up making love. Standing up making love. All right. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. Got it. <laughs> Then why? Chasing Farrah, Kid Inventors will join us right after this. That's really how you do it. Our next guests are three brilliant kids who are prize winners from the Craftsman NSTA Young Inventors Awards program. Please say hello to Emily Farrington, Tyler Shepard, and Allison Sinkmar. Yeah. Okay, good. You're, uh, you're Emily, right? Yes. Hello, Emily. And uh, this is fantastic that you've invented anything at all, but this looks pretty complicated. So tell me what you invented. I you, first am, of all, how old are you? I'm 10 years old. You're 10 years old? Yes. Is this the first thing you've ever invented? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, you just call me Ellen. That makes me feel old. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. And so how did you come up with this, and what is it? This is the Bow Planter 2000, and I came up with this idea because my dad is a landscaper, and one day I was watching him planting bulbs in front in our garden, and I saw how many steps there were in planting bulbs, and that night his back was hurting. So I came up with an idea that will make it funner and easier to plant bulbs. <laughs> This is so cute. All right, so. <laughs> all right, funner and easier to plant bulbs because he was not enjoying getting down and, and doing that. Okay, so. Too many steps. Too many steps. All right, so what, what it's a, a ball, it's a 2,000 bulb planter? It's a bulb planter that makes you want to plant 2,000 bulbs. Oh, really? Has anyone done that? I don't think so. No. But, but they uh, will with the bulb planter. But what? They will with the bulb planter. Okay. <laughs> all right, show me what happens. This is pretending to be the ground in there. And this is the bowl planner. What happens? What do you do? The first thing you do is you screw off the screw on lid. Uh huh. And then you take your bulb and you put it inside the bowl planter. What kind of bulb is that? This is a flower bulb. A flower bulb. What kind of flower? Do you know? It's a tulip. Okay. And you stick it in there mm -hmm. and you screw on the lid. And you take it. And you stick the blue wedge at the bottom inside the soil uh -huh. and give it a twist uh -huh. so it makes a perfect hole. Sure. 
And then you tilt it over to the side, uh -huh. and you pull the lever, and the bulb will fall out into the hole. Uh -huh. Then you shut your let, and then you shut the lever, uh -huh. and you turn the wheel and axle, uh -huh. and watered fertilizer will go into the hole uh -huh. for, <laughs> for a healthy growth. Uh -huh. And <laughs> then you take it, you right. cover it, cover it up with your foot, uh -huh. and you're all done. Wow. <laughs> I wish I could watch you do 1,999 more of those. <laughs> That's great. You should come up with a, a bulb planter 2020, just in case people want to plant more. Okay. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> well, that's great. If you want to keep planting, keep doing that. I have to move on. And you have it in a little guitar holder thing, don't you? <laughs> yes, That's right. That's really fantastic. Um, all right, Emily, that's, I'm so proud of you for doing that. And, uh, okay, hi. How are you? Good. What's your name? Tyler you're, Shepard. You're Tyler. And Tyler, uh, how old are you? Eleven. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot for a minute there, didn't you? <laughs> And where do you live, Tyler? Baton Rouge, Louisiana. W Baton Rouge? I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. Yeah. How about that? All right. All right. You don't care. Um, <laughs> all right. And this, I can tell, obviously, it's something that I'd put my face in. Is that right? Yeah. What do you do? What is it? It's a um, milk pour device type thingy mabobber. <laughs> all right. I'd say you should work on the name. But, um... <laughs> A milk pour device type thingy pourer? No, it's called the easy pour. Oh, well, there is a name for it. Okay. Um, all right. So tell me what happens. It's a milk pourer, and why did you come up with this? And uh, show me how it works. Well, I came up with it to help elderly people and young people because my little brother, he uh, would always spill milk all over the place. So mm -hmm. I decided to help him um, and other people with it. Well, that's sweet of you. All right. So you put the milk. With, show me what you do. Okay. Put the milk in here. Okay. Screw off the top. You hold the handle back. You put the cup up here. Uh huh. And you just pour it out. That's a great idea. Until you have enough milk. That's great. I bet that would work with gin, too, if you just put that in there. <laughs> All right, um, that's a great idea. And, and have you, do you use it at home? Oh uh, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, and nobody's spilling it anymore? No, not really. That's a great idea. Thank you very much, Tyler. Fantastic. Hi, how are you? All right, and you're Allison, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, Allison, and how old are you? Ten and a half. Ten and a half, and you live where? In uh, Seekonk, Massachusetts. In uh, wh where, Massachusetts? Seekonk. And where is that near, uh, is it near Boston? Yeah. Okay, great. And, uh, and you invented what? This is the no-tip wheelbarrow, and I invented it because I work at a horse barn, mm -hmm. and sometimes you have to, when you clean out the stalls, you have to put in new shavings, and sometimes the wheelbarrow gets so heavy you can't tip it over. Shavings meaning, I don't know about a barn, so it's They're a, like shavings of wood, like wood chips. Or wood like. chips that the, the, the animals enjoy uh, because of the smell? <laughs> no, that's just what they put in for like bedding. All right, so uh, they, that's where they sleep. They sleep on the, the shavings. Okay, and so so this is a no-tip wheelbarrow. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? What does that do? It means that you don't have to tip it over because if you pull out this pin, there'll be doors that open up. Oh, I see. idea too. Very, very, very smart of you. Hold on, I want to plant a tulip in that. <laughs> I don't have one. All right, um, listen, uh, the kids uh, can enter the 2005 Young Inventors Competition beginning this fall and go to our website to find out how. We'll be right back with Andy Richter. That's from Late Night with Conan O'Brien and such films as Elf in New York Minute. His new Fox sitcom is called The Quintuplets. Take a look. Please welcome back to the show, Andy Richter.
Yes. Oh, people. Yeah. I thought it was just going to be you and me. This is awkward. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I can't really open up. Oh, God. Oh, did Actually, you... I can. Yeah. <laughs> um, Please do. What was it? I, I saw you once during the summer. What did you do this summer? This summer, actually, uh, I, I had uh, August off. The, the show started sort of at a weird time. It started in the summer, so we're sort of not... We have a different school year than most of the other TV kids. Really? Yeah. We, uh, so we had August off, uh, and we went uh, right away. M my wife is from New Orleans, mm -hmm. your, your hometown. So yes. we went uh, to New Orleans in August. Oh, that's nice yeah, and cool and, and... Nothing says vacation like sweating through your pants. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, but we went down and we, and we went to, to visit. My, my mother-in-law lives there, and we went to, we went to her house. And um, I'm good there for about 10 minutes. Uh-huh. You know, okay, you know, yeah. and, and uh, luckily uh, her yard is full of lizards. Which uh, fascinated my son. He uh -huh. was outside. I have a. Four, he was almost four, uh -huh. and he was outside trying to catch the lizards. And I thought, hey, let's just get a butterfly net. Let's go somewhere mm -hmm. and get a butterfly net. So instead I said, of going like that, right? To him? Instead, yeah. Yeah, yeah, instead of like me squashing them in my hand, which yeah. would have been unpleasant for me and terrifying for him. Uh, Worse for the lizard. Probably. Yeah. yeah. But so my mother-in-law says, well, why don't you go to and like one of the dollar stores there and there's like. The dollar hut, the dollar barn, the dollar cave, like everything's like a dollar store. And we I went to every they, they single- They have a dollar cave? I didn't <laughs> well, realize I, that. I no. made, that one I made, okay. made up. Um, but uh, went to every single one of them there and everybody's like, no, I, it's, it's late in the season for butterfly nets. <laughs> so uh, we ended up going to Walmart. Uh, and we, we asked a guy in the toy department, which is, of course, gigantic, you know, mm -hmm. is there a butterfly net? And he said, I think we got some over here. And he, and he found one, and he went like, wait, that's a boar, right? And I said, yeah, and he went, well, this one's got a pink handle. <laughs> I said, oh, it doesn't matter. And he went like, you sure? <laughs> I said, yeah, he's four years, three years old, it doesn't matter. And he, he goes like, let me go check in the back. <laughs> so he goes all the way to the back and comes back and he's like, I'm real sorry. We just got the. And it was like the color I, I, of your sweater. He's like, he's uh, like, I, we just got this pink one. Uh, and I said, it's fine. It doesn't matter. And you know, I didn't want to tell him like if they had had 20 colors, my son probably would have picked the pink one uh -huh. anyway yeah, right. because this is you yeah. know it's a he, pretty color. He loves pink. Yeah. You know, it's. And did you catch many lizards? Uh, no. By the time we got back, they'd wised up or something. Yeah. <laughs> so oh. sort of all, but oh. you know, it was a good time killer. And at every dollar store, uh, my son got. Uh, a worthless piece of garbage because it's only a dollar. Yeah. So we came up with like four little, you know, bad things that broke in a day. It's a know. good way to kill a day. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, listen, do you want to buy any of Farrah's hair? <laughs> um, well, I don't see any. No, well, I put it away. Somebody will give it think safekeeping. About, think about it. We have to take a commercial. We'll be okay. right back right after this. Oh, no, stop All right, so uh, you just did, which I think I'm going to do now, the Celebrity Poker yeah. Showdown on Bravo. Yeah, it, I was terrible. Is it aired yet, or did you just <laughs> yeah, shoot it's, it? Yeah, it's been on. Oh, it's it been has. on. I was, uh, I was the first one out, and and it well, it didn't look as bad as I thought it was because it takes forever. Mm -hmm. It's uh, this is this game Texas Hold'em. You get two cards, and half the time you don't get good cards, and you fold. Right. So you fold probably twenty times for every time that you that you go in or have a good hand and go. And so it went on forever. And I uh, actually, I just got bored. I was, I was the end, that, I was like, all right, I'm all in. You know, yeah. what do I, and, um, and I was playing against uh, John Favreau, who was, I think took it really seriously. And every time he would sort of think about it, he would look like he was like a vintner, you know, examining like a, <laughs> You know, and so he was looking at me, and I thought it was—I thought it was just kind of funny. So I went all in with nothing, and he was looking at me, considering me, and I just kind of went. <laughs> I had my eyebrow up. Yeah. And uh, Phil Gordon, the expert, said, "If anyone makes this face, please call them because yeah. they're bluffing," which uh, I didn't know. Yeah, he so gives I, all that away. I lost, and you have to go. You're committed to go to the losers' lounge. Yeah. And sit there. And it, it was long enough, because then they, they, they bring you drinks. Mm -hmm. It was long enough that I could actually kind of get, as my mother would say, a little tipsy. 
and then sober up again. Oh. Like I actually went through wow. a whole a, a drunk cycle. It took so long. Wow, that's a long yeah. time. Yeah. And, 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 I, and when I was sort of like on the downside of the drunk, I was sitting there like this, and you know, when you're supposed to still, they want right. you to kind of still comment. And poor uh, Tom Everett Scott from ER was sitting next to me and trying to be a good sport and going like, well, that was a good hand. And he'd look at me and I'd practically go like, uh, bah! Uh, <laughs> uh, who cares, oh. you know? If you haven't seen it, it's on Bravo. It's Celebrity Poker Showdown, and it's really fascinating to watch. Yeah, it is. And I've always wondered what happens back there, and now I know. That's it. All right, well, Pretty I'll much. probably end up back there, too, because <laughs> yeah. I'm going to play, and I'll no, lose. No, I don't no. like to fold, so I bluff every hand. Oh, now I've given it away. <laughs> <laughs> Unless right, this uh, is a trick. Unless I'm kidding, mm. yeah. This is my bluff face. Do you have a bluff face now, though? Uh, I think oh, what I'm just going to do is do this with every time. So, yeah. You know. Well, they say to wear a big hat right, like that. Right, right. I'm going to wear, like, a big gardening hat and... Uh, <laughs> And motorcycle goggles. Right. <laughs> a beekeeper's bonnet. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Right. Um, all right. Oh, thanks for being here sure. again. I love uh, you coming on the show. Uh, the Quintuplets airs Wednesdays at 8.30 on Fox. And uh, one more thing after this. I want to thank Mayor Fawcett and all the kid inventors tomorrow. Kirsten Dunst and Scott Wolf will join me. Oh, and one more thing. We wanted to show uh, a hilarious clip from uh, Conan O'Brien's uh, 10th anniversary special. And this is of Andy Richter. It's one of the most hilarious clips. Take a look. See you tomorrow. Bye.